Want to learn more about Selenium 4? Why did Slack go down last week? And how can you use AI to spot bugs and security risk? Find all the answers to these and all other end-to-end -end full pipeline DevOps, automation, performance, and security testing in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of February 27th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Guild News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools is a next generation test automation platform, which is powered by visual AI, which helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and reduce costs with what is, I believe, the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But don't just take my word for it. Check it out for yourself by creating a free account now by clicking on the link in the first comment down below. And while you're there, why not like, leave a comment, and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. Do you know what is one of the secrets to continuous testing success? When I worked for a large company enterprise, it always sometimes boiled down to the environment. And that's why I want to share with you this next resource. I'm actually hosting a webinar tomorrow if you're watching this on Monday. If not, you'll be able to get this on replay. I actually interviewed Tommy uh, from release on my podcast. And after speak with them, I thought it'd make more sense for people to actually see it. So Tommy's going to join the Test Guild webinar series to give a demo to share his journey and what you can learn about people in process that are involved with creating the proper environments for your testing, development, and staging deployment. So here's your opportunity to hear a senior and also how it actually applies to helping you scale automation testing as well. So last year, we saw a demo of someone from Apply Tools using GitHub Copilot to help automate creating the code to actually use the eyes SDK that Apply Tools has for visual validation testing, which is really cool. So this next article really caught my attention with someone that used Serenity BDD and Copilot. And if you don't know, if you don't remember from when we covered this last time, their GitHub Copilot really uses artificial intelligence and natural language processing in a specific way that allows it to harness open AI to synthesize and suggest code for you as you're writing. Now Cole goes on to talk about how can you use it, details of his project using GitHub Copilot, sample scenarios, it's a really nice long article with uh, GitHub Copilot with what was one of my favorite frameworks when I was working full-time on automation, which is the Serenity. BDD framework. So you probably heard in the news the what's going on in the Ukraine and Russia. Well, if you're an automation engineer and you want to know how you can support your fellow Ukrainian test automation engineers, the founder of Code Concept JS talks about how you can do just that. And so Code Concept JS, the creator actually is Ukrainian. And he says, I hope it's a good chance for more people to learn about Code Concept JS, which is made in the Ukraine. Uh, it's a really cool platform. It's a browser testing framework with a simple BDD inspired syntax for writing tests. And it works on top of Playwright and WebDriver IO. If you're looking for an end to end way to really supercharge your framework for Node.js, definitely give this a look. And, and by doing so, you're also helping uh, the developer that's in the Ukraine and spreading awareness about what's going on there as well. And while on Twitter, I also noticed that Rex Jones actually released a brand new course on Apply Tools Test Automation University on the latest features in Selenium 4 in Java. There's a lot of teaching, a lot of speaking, really great resource. And here's just another example of him helping the community, which is one of the many, many courses that are offered by Test Automation University and Apply Tools. So definitely check that out and let me know what you think in the comments down below. So our next article is a money segment on how Waldo raises 15 million for its automation mobile testing service. For its no-code automation testing tool, mobile development teams using Waldo, they say, can set up tests without writing a line of scripting code in and then seamlessly integrates into your CI, CD pipelines. And since I've never heard of Waldo before, I just clicked on the Waldo link and checked it out. Seems pretty cool. A lot of times you hear about low-code, no-code solutions. It's usually always geared towards browser-based automation. Uh, this one seems specifically geared towards automated mobile testing. And once again, I haven't used it before. So if it's something you've tried, you've liked it, leave a comment and let us know how it worked for you. So the company Test Sigma is really on a roll. I featured them last week when they open source one of their solutions. And now this just came across my desk how they just received $4.6 million in funding. And what they're trying to do at Test Sigma is not just simplify automation to speed up the testing, but also make it sustainable, scalable process in which tools and frameworks don't require ongoing maintenance. And if that's the case, then you should definitely give them a look and see if it's something that can help you as well, uh, because now it looks like they have some money behind them as well, besides that open source solution we mentioned last week. 
So definitely give them a look if you haven't already from last week in the first comment down below. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So once again, this article came my way because I was looking at companies buying other companies and I noticed that NetApp, who I've never heard about before, splashes in the cash on, I don't know if I'm saying this right, flat Flaminit, which I've never heard of, but these kind of articles, let me learn more about cool solutions that may be able to help me or you with your day-to-day -day job. So this one is about Flaminit, which is a cloud ops automation startup and in how NetApp is purchasing it and adding it to the cloud operations product portfolio. And if you check out what the heck Flamma is, it brings cloud automation for DevOps and SREs to the Spot Cloud Automation Platform. So it looks like a solution that can help you with your incident response, connect automation tools, governance and compliance, cost management, performance management, as well as security. So nice solution, nice find. And once again, you can check that out in the first link down below. Give it a spin. Let me know what you think and if you use it and what you think of this solution as well. So speaking of SRE, cyber liability news, I'm not sure if you saw this, but I'm sure you were affected by it. I know a lot of people on Twitter were complaining last week that Slack went down as well as Peloton experienced widespread outages last week. What's interesting is that both these platforms use AWS, but AWS responded saying that they're Issues did not originate with AWS. And as of yet, Amazon and GitHub have yet to comment on this situation. So just another reason why uh, site reliability is so important and doing chaos engineering and seeing what happens to make sure your application is resilient to type of things like servers going down. Uh, just another example of why it's so critical. Next up, security news. So we all know about security risk with our code and the attack surface around code itself, but what about our pipelines? So this next article talks about why DevOps pipelines are under attack and also how to fight back. This article just goes on to talk about how attacks on DevOps pipelines are increasing. According to a study, supply chain grew by more than 300% compared to 2020. It talks about why DevOps pipelines are vulnerable types of attacks on DevOps pipelines, vulnerability and open source components, and how to protect against, and how to protect your software development pipelines and where to start. So I think it's a really timely article that uh, I think most of us nowadays deal with pipelines and automation as well. So definitely something to check out in that first comment down below. So I think I found a AI machine learning type of scenario where a solution makes sense and a company actually implemented it. So AWS actually rolled out an AI code reviewer, which can now spot low-hanging fruit like log for shell like bugs in Java and Python code. As you know, log for shell was a big issue a few, year, a few weeks ago with security a few months ago. And here's uh, uh, an example of how AWS's new AI code reviewer can now spot these types of issues with bugs and other security risk as well. And it just goes on to explain how AWS has updated the detectors in its code guru review tool to seek out log injection flaws like recent disclosed log for shell bugs in the popular Java logging library log4j. And it also announced two new features for code guru review, AWS scanners that use machine learning to check code during reviews for bugs to suggest improvements for security issues. And the tool aims to improve code reviews in the context of continuous integration and delivery processes for developers with code. After developers commit code, they can add code guru re review as a code reviewer. The article goes on to explain other features and how other ways it can help you. So I think this is an awesome use of machine learning and AI. So love to know what you have thoughts are as well. All right, for our links of Earth and Valley, we covered in this news episode, head on over to the links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our sponsor, Apply Tools, by creating a free account and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level by clicking on that link in that comment down below. It shows Apply Tools that the new show is adding value and it helps support the show as well. So thank you everyone that has clicked on it and created a free account because not only does it help the show, but it also helps you using a tool technology that I think really is going to help accelerate your automation testing as well. That's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. Once again, I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.